This is my brand new MacBook Pro M3 Space Black Edition, and I'm gonna show you in just a few minutes on how to set this beast up to have a full-fledged developer workstation. This is what I use on every single machine I own, and it works for me, and I hope it works for you too. All right, after you've installed all your basic tools like Chrome or Arc Browser if you're part of the new age, it's time to start diving into the actual developer tools. So right out of the gate, Mac comes with a terminal that makes our lives much more easier because I think as we go through it, just having the terminal and be able to use Homebrew is gonna be a game changer. And if you've not heard Homebrew, just know that whoever created Homebrew, you owe them a beer because it is single-handedly one of the best package managers on all of the Mac ecosystem. I don't care what you say, Homebrew is the best one. Brew.sh, that's all you need to know. Come right here onto the home screen and you'll see the curl command that you need to actually install Brew. And once you install Brew, it is just using the tool itself to install everything else. All right, so I've installed Visual Studio Code, Docker, Git, Xcode. Xcode actually comes from the application store. I forgot to mention that. That one does not install in Brew, but on a Mac where you have Xcode, you must install it through the App Store. So go ahead and get that installed if you're going to do any kind of Swift or React Native development because you will need it, especially to get access to those simulators. But now that all of our installs are done, let's go ahead and start diving into my Visual Studio Code setup and a couple quick tricks on how you can actually get moving quicker and migrate from your old machine to your new machine. And before we dive in, the number one critical thing that you need to do is make sure before you sell, trade in, throw away with your old Mac or Windows machine, whatever it is, you need to go inside of Visual Studio Code, click the gear icon in the bottom left hand corner and set up backup and sync. If you do this, your transition to your new computer will be absolutely seamless. And if you don't, you're gonna have to do everything from scratch. So this is a pro tip, life hack, whatever you wanna call it. Don't miss this step. Make sure you set up the backup and sync and you'll have a much better time. All right, for those of you who have your sync and backup set up from your old machine, your life is gonna be really easy, as I said before. All you need to do is come down into the gear icon, click it, set your sync back on, and wait a few minutes and you're literally done. All of your themes, your fonts, your extensions, all of that is gonna transfer over to this brand new computer of yours and keep your life real freaking easy. Just move on to your next tool, like setting up Warp or Notion. But for those of you who are brand new, setting up a brand new machine, or you did not know about that feature and you've already ditched your old machine, here are a couple of the extensions that I use and why I like to use them. So right out of the gate, predominantly I'm doing React Native type development. If I'm doing anything else on this machine, it's going to be like React Next.js type development. So I guess first and foremost, let's just start with how it looks. I am running either one of two themes every single time, either the default dark theme, or if we search for theme here with the hotkeys, command K, command T, I like to run one called MCI Nord. So this is a super chill theme where it's not a lot of bright and bold colors. I actually don't like bold colors. I don't like light themes because I actually care about my eyes and sometimes I need a little bit of a break from the default dark theme and MCI Nord is like I said, it's a super chill, not a lot of bright colors in here. This purple is okay. I wish it was a slightly different hue. One of the big things for me that I personally like to avoid is themes that use red whenever you're opening a little component. So like if I'm making a new view here, in this example, MCI Nord has it as blue. I don't like when that's red because I don't know, red to me in an IDE is generally a bad thing, right? It's red squiggles, nobody likes those, especially working type script, you don't love those. And it's generally just something I try to avoid. So it's either MCI Nord, it's a super niche theme, or go back to the default modern dark. Now let's go ahead and dive into a few of my favorite extensions. We're gonna keep this super high level and super simple so that you don't get overwhelmed because there's a bajillion extensions that you could be using. But here's a couple that I really recommend. If you are a TypeScript developer, one of the biggest extensions you need is called Pretty TypeScript Errors. Without this extension, your life is going to be hell because the errors you get are just atrocious and it's very difficult to read. So Pretty TypeScript Errors is super clutch to giving you something that is actually readable and actually usable I have no clue why this needs to be an extension and it's just not part of the ecosystem altogether because I don't know a single person who wants to read the gobbledygook that comes out of TypeScript errors. The next big extensions for me is actually two extensions and they're all around to-dos. I'm a big list person, whether on physical paper, my notebook, or writing to-dos in the code, which I do all over the place, everywhere, I really like these two extensions. And that is the to-do tree, which gives you an additional option over in your nav bar to come and click it. Look under your projects, under specific components. You know, I have, looks like I have a bunch of to-dos under here. And you can, oh, looks like under the inventory item, I have a to-do to pluralize the items. 
I really love using to do's to not jump out of code and make like a notion ticket. And instead I write as quick to do and at like once a week or at the end of the day, I'll come back through the to do tree, look at all my to do's, see if they're really still something I need to do. And if they are, I can very quickly translate those to Notion tickets. The other huge extension that I really recommend is called To Do Highlight. This is a very simple extension. It is just wherever you put a to do, as long as it is capital T O D O, it will highlight it in your IDE and just help it stand out a little more. So it's nothing very special about that one. I just prefer it because it's just uh, easier to read. There's a few other keywords that will highlight like fix me and things like that. But this is a really powerful tool, especially when you're collaborating with people because it'll just help stand it out when you're doing code reviews and things like that. Look, and you can't be using Visual Studio Code literally at all if you're not using Prettier and Prettier ES Lint. I don't need to say a whole lot about those. Y'all already know about that amazing plugin. And if you are not using it, I'm assuming your code is absolutely atrocious. And just because I'm a fan of things looking pretty and tidy, I like to run the material icon theme, which just allows you to go into your navigation panel and have a little bit of a different icon for things like source and API and app and it just helps clean it up allows you to very quickly scan and see what things are in your baseline without having to read every single file if you're using a component library like GlueStack for cross-platform development I think there's a few others there is a Visual Studio extension to autocomplete little snippets of some of the GlueStack code I just find that helps speed me up and make me a little more productive this one is super niche so if you're not using GlueStack this one's not gonna do anything for you and the last extension I recommend that I'm pretty sure we're all using at this point is going to be your github copilot which if you're not using it it is a good tool. I find sometimes it has a little bit of a brain aneurysm and it freaks out, but overall, I think it's a great tool. And in particular, you wanna make sure that you download the extension for the chat. It'll put it left here on your nav bar and allow you to chat with Copilot itself. The reason I say this is if you just use Copilot within the code, I actually think it uses a 3.5 model from ChatGPT, whereas I believe using the chat panel uses the new 4.0 models. So I often find that I get much better results being able to use the chat panel rather than using the encode command line. So that is all of the extensions that I really recommend you start out with. And I wanna know, drop a comment down below. Let me know what extensions I'm missing. I do React Native Development, Next.js Development, Nest JS backend development. I know it's like the it's like the spring for web development and I freaking love it. But what am I missing? What should I be using to make me a little more productive, a little happier? Uh, don't suggest the all purple or all pink code themes because as y'all know, I can't do it. I hate the bright colors. Now that you got your Visual Studio Code set up, there's two more things that I like to set up. One, I like to ditch this default terminal and install something called warp. So that's just a brew install cask warp. And this is a new terminal that allows you to do many more powerful things. It has autocomplete, it's got better history tracking, and I think it is just a super cool tool. So if you've never tried out Warp, I really encourage you to try it out. And like any good developer, the last thing I'm gonna install here is Notion, and I use Notion for everything. I'm a big fan, I think I've said this in a previous video, I'm a big fan of having my to-do task list ticket items, you know, your Kanban board, directly alongside my documentation. So maybe it's because I grew up in like the GitLab ecosystem, your wiki, your pipelines, and your Kanban board all in one, but that is something I'm a huge fan of. I've tried other tools like GitHub Projects, which is really awesome if you don't care about having your docs right alongside, but let's just go ahead and brew install Notion, and which is our last tool that we need. Stay organized, stay on top of our to-do list. This is how I manage my nine to five. I have a wife, I have a kid. I'm still working on side projects, multiple of them, and still making videos here on YouTube. I manage all of that through Notion. In the future, I'm gonna show you some of my tips and tricks on how I do balance those priorities because I set up a couple special swim lanes that I think will be super helpful for those of you who are parents and just have a lot of things going on. But that is it, less than 10 minutes and you have a full developer workstation again. You have VS Code, you have all your tools installed. Homebrew is now your superhero if it wasn't already before. And I gotta get back to work. We are nearing the edge of this MVP timeline. I'm still holding tight to that target and I gotta start slinging some code again. Next week, we'll get back onto our normal vlog style, showing off the product type videos. And with that, I will see you all next week. Peace.